ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار الحمد لله we praise Allah and we seek his assistance and we seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and from our bad deeds whoever Allah guides there is none that can lead him astray and whoever is led astray and there is no guide for him I bear witness that no God has the right to be worshipped other than Allah. He is alone and has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah as you ought to be feared and don't die except as Muslims. O oh, humanity, fear your Lord who has created you from a single soul and created from it its mate and scattered from them too many men and women. And fear Allah so you demand your mutual rights and don't cut off relations with the wombs that bore you. Indeed, Allah is a raqib over you. A watcher over you. O you who believe, fear Allah and say that which is correct, in order that he may accept from you your deeds and forgive you of your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger achieves the greatest achievement. Amma ba'du. Certainly the most truthful speech is the book of Allah. And the finest guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most evil of affairs are newly invented matters in this deen. And every newly invented matter in this deen is a bid'ah, and every bid'ah is a strang, and every strang is in the fire. We're continuing with the aqeed of Sufyan ibn Uyayna, and his statement, rahimahullah, as-sunnatu ashara. فَمَنْ اسْتَكْمَلَهَا فَقَدْ اسْتَكْمَلَ السُنَّةِ وَمَنْ تَرَكَ مِنْهَا شَيْئًا فَقَدْ تَرَكَ السُنَّةِ وَذَكَرَ مِنْهَا الْمِيزَانِ Sufyan Ibn Uyayna rahimahullah, he says that the sunnah is ten. And that whoever has these ten, then he has completed the sunnah. And whoever has left off any of these ten, have left off the sunnah. And he mentioned the mizan, or the scales. The scales that will be placed on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, where a servant and his actions will be weighed to determine whether he will go to paradise, to Jannah, or whether he will go to the fire. And we see evidence for this statement of Sufyan ibn Uyayna rahimahullah in Allah's book and from the sunnah of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qala Allah ta'ala, وَالْوَزْنُ يَوْمَ إِذِنِ الْحَقَّ فَمَنْ فَمَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَئِكَ مِ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يَظْلِمُونَ Well, Allah Ta'ala says, the weighing on that day will be in truth. So whoever scales are heavy, those they are the successful and whoever scales are light then they are those who have wronged them their souls or who have lost their souls because they denied our ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows the truth of the scales and whoever scales are heavy meaning with good belief and good deeds good belief in Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
and righteous deeds in accordance to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And whoever's scales are light, meaning with the absence of this, because of disbelief in Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in disbelief, or the absence of following or not following Allah's book and the Sunnah of His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then his abode will be the fire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. Allah ta'ala, he says in other ayat, وَنَضْعُ الْمَوَازِينَ الْقِصْطَ لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَنَضْعُ الْمَوَازِينَ الْقِصْطَ لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ فَلَا تُظْلَمُ نَفْسٌ شَيْئًا وَإِنْ كَانَ مِثْقَالَ حَبَّةٍ مِّنْ خَرْدَلٍ أَتَيْنَا بِهَا وَكَفَى بِنَا حَاسِبِينَ Allah Ta'ala He says, And the scales will be placed on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and no soul shall be wronged at all. And if it was a mustard grain, if it was a mustard seed or a grain, we will bring it forth and we are sufficient as those to take account. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this verse, He shows us that no soul shall be wrong, but that the scales of justice will be placed forth on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and that everyone will get exactly what he earned. If it's good, then he will see it. And if it's bad, he will see it. And no matter how big or small it is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring it forth and it will be weighed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our scales heavy on that day. That Allah takes us into account. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال كلمتان خفيفتان على اللسان ثقيلتان في الميزان حبيبتان إلى الرحمن سبحان الله وبحمده سبحان سبحان الله العظيم متفق عليه. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu he narrates on the authority of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said there are two words that are light on the tongue and these two words are heavy in the scale and these two words are beloved to ar-Rahman subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah al-azim this is collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Here the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teaches us that the dhikr of Allah Ta'ala and the mentioning and the praising of Him and glorifying Him and this manner taught by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is weighty in the scales on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. وعن أبي الدرداء رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ما شيء أثقل في ميزان في ميزان المؤمن يوم القيامة من خلق حسن وإن الله لا يبغض الفاحش البذي أخرجه الترمذي وقال حسن صحيح أبو الدرداء رضي الله عنه he said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said there is nothing more weighty and the scales of a believer on the day of resurrection than good character. And indeed Allah, He hates Al-Fahish al badi or the one who uses bad language. This is collected authentically by Imam Al-Tirmidhi. And these are some ayah and hadith of the Messenger wasallam to show the truth of this statement of Sufyan ibn Uyayna rahimahullah and that is that as Muslims we believe in the mizan or we believe in the scales that will be placed on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and that we and our deeds will be weighed and that whoever has good deeds and good belief in Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then he will be successful then he will be from the people of Jannah may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala enter us into Jannah and whoever has disbelief in Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and disobedience to the Qur'an and the Sunnah, disobedience to Allah and His Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, then he will be from the people of the fire. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala save us from the fire. I want to take a minute for us to reflect <coughs> on this point of our belief that we believe in the Mizan and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
he will weigh our deeds on that day. And the believer who takes this into account, then he's always taking himself into account by looking at his deeds to make sure that they're good and that they outweigh his bad deeds because they will be weighed on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us that even a mustard grain will be brought forth on that day, don't think that you're doing something because the people don't see you, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not hold you accountable for it on that day. Be mindful of the scales. As we said, and we say oftentimes, that our belief, it encourages us to have good deeds. As the Prophet wasallam, as we have mentioned, showed that the weightiest thing in the scales on Yom Al-Qiyamah is good character and that good belief in Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as detailed in the Qur'an and the Sunnah and explained to us by the great scholars of Islam like Sufyan ibn Uyayna then this produces a good character for the believers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to perfect our character. Sufyan ibn Uyayna rahimahullah he says wasirat or that from the Sunnah or the belief of the Muslims is the Sirat, or the bridge that is over Jahannam. وعن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت سألت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن قول الله عز وجل يوم تبدل الأرض غير الأرض والسماوات قالت فأين يكون الناس يوم إذ يا رسول الله فقال على الصراط أخرج أخرجه مسلم عائشة رضي الله عنها she said I asked the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم about the statement of Allah عز وجل on a day when the earth on a day when the heavens and the earth when the earth will be replaced with another earth and also the heaven. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, and where will the people be on that day? And the Prophet sallallahu said, on the sirat, and this is collected by Imam Muslim. One ummi mubashir, imra'ati Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu anhuma, qalat, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في بيت حفصة رضي الله عنها فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يدخل النار أحد شهد بدرا والحديبية قالت حفصة أوليس الله عز وجل يقول وإن منكم إلا واردها قالت قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما ثم ينجي الذين اتقوا أخرجه أحمد وهو حسن أو صحيح أم بشرة the wife of Zayd ibn Harith رضي الله عنهما she said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he was in the house of Hafsa and he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no one who had witnessed Badr or Al Hudaybiyah will be entered into the fire. So Hafsa radiallahu anha, she said, But doesn't Allah Azza wa Jal say, And there is none from amongst them except that they will enter it, meaning the fire. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that's enough. Then those, then those who fear Allah would be saved. And this is collected by Imam Ahmed and it's authentic. Hafsa radiallahu anha, she understood from the statement of Allah Ta'ala, وَإِن مِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا and there are none except they will enter it, meaning enter into the fire. This was her understanding of this ayah. But the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he clarified 
that it wasn't entering into the fire, but it was passing over the fire, meaning on the sirat. And that the believers, they will be saved by crossing safely over the sirat, over the fire because of their good belief and their obedience to Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the wrongdoers who disbelieve in Allah and His Messenger alayhi wa and disobey Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they will not be successful in crossing over the sirat, but rather they will fall into it. These are just some hadith or explanation and ex- with explanation of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to ayah in the Quran showing the truth of the belief of the Muslims and the Sirat that will be placed on Yawm Al Qiyamah that the believers or that the people would cross according to their deeds. Those who have good belief and righteous deeds they will cross by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission and be saved from the fire. But those with disbelief in Allah and His Messenger والسلام, and wicked evil deeds of disobedience to Allah and His Messenger Muhammad وسلم, they will fall off the sirat into the fire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. These are a few points from the belief of the Muslims. Learn the belief of the Muslims and the evidences from Allah's book and the sunnah of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to establish and correct our belief because the way we live our lives and practice Islam it will be determined by the way we believe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and help us to correct our belief. بسم الله الحمد لله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت لم يكن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يصوم شهرا أكثر من شعبان فإنه كان يصوم شعبان كله وكان يقول صلى الله عليه وسلم خذوا من العمل ما تطيقون فإن الله لا تمل حتى تملوا وكان النبي صلى الله عليه وإن أحب الصلاة إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ما دوم عليه وإن قلت وكان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا صلى صلاة داوم عليها متفق عليه عائشة رضي الله عنها she says that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم never used to fast a whole month or never used to fast more so in a month than he did in the month of Sha'aban Indeed, he used to fast all of Sha'aban, meaning most of Sha'aban, as we see in other narrations on the authority of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he used to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do of the actions or the deeds that which you have the ability to do, because Allah will never get tired until you get tired. And the Prophet Sallallahu the most beloved Salah to him was that which was done on a regular basis no matter how, little, how few they were. And indeed the Prophet Sallallahu whenever he established the Salah he would do it on a regular basis. This is collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Here in this hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, we see the importance of fasting the month of Sha'aban, which is the month before Ramadan, which is the month that we are in right now today. Walhamdulillah. And it's from the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to fast as much as you could of this month as was his sunnah alayhi wa salatu wa salam. But he also encouraged us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to do what we have the ability to do. But what is important is not necessarily how much you do, but that you are regular in your worship of Allah Ta'ala 
as Aisha radiallahu anha explains from the hadith of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so in this month of Sha'ban take advantage and fast as many days as you have the ability to do so because as much as you try to get closer to Allah then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will sh- show his mercy on you and forgive you of your sins and accept from you your worship done in accordance to the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sincerely and solely for his sake alone let's take advantage of this month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with our health and our lives in this month to fast for his sake in accordance to the sunnah of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fast in this month and take advantage of adherence to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but do what you have the ability to do don't overburden yourselves meaning don't overburden yourselves in trying to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much that eventually you leave off the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala altogether no gradually develop habits of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a regular basis with what you have the ability to do and then continue to add on and that's how you become a better worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us and it's important for the Muslims to understand this point as this will help them to perfect their worship of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to start off with what you have the ability and to continue to increase like maybe with the year that we accepted Islam, we fasted one day from the month of Sha'ban. And then the next year, two days. And then the next year, three days. And like that, you stay regular with the worship of Allah Ta'ala until you're able to increase and to get and develop how to get a bigger reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Let's take advantage of this month by fasting to receive the the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he rewards the fasters with a more magnificent reward than he does for other deeds also let's reflect on these two points from our belief that was explained to us by Sufyan ibn Uyayna rahimahullah and that is the belief in the scales and the belief in the surat and let this belief affect your actions let this belief help you to perfect your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to stay regular. To stay regular with your worship of Allah ta'ala as you try to make your scales heavy on the day that you meet Allah ta'ala. Try to stay regular with your deeds, your acts of worship of Allah ta'ala so that your deeds will carry you over the surat on the day when you will need good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to correct our belief. Allahumma inna nasaluka al-jannah. O oh Allah, we ask you for jannah. Allahumma jirna min al-nar. O oh Allah, save us from the fire. Allahumma sayyib al-nafi'a. O oh Allah, make this rain fall good and beneficial. Allahumma sayyib al-nafi'a. O oh Allah, make this rain pour beneficial. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar. Our Lord, give us the good in this world and the good in the hereafter and to save us from the fire. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Wa subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk Walhamdulillah